music you're just listening to was made by this. I'll bring you up to date. First, this happened. So it turns out lakes or lochs, this is Duddingston Loch, they have a pitch if you throw things across them when they're frozen. Now it doesn't matter what you throw or how fast you throw it, that pitch doesn't change, but it does change over time. So listen to this. By my calculation, it's gone down by about a semitone. The problem is with that recording is it's not clean. There's a road just there. So I decided to do this. So that was me here, or rather there, 2.30 in the morning, trying to extract this pitch, which had dropped from a B flat to a D by this point, and turn it into a musical instrument, which you can now download for free in the link in the descriptions below. I've also included a couple more links, if you're new to this channel or indeed to Spitfire Audio, of places you can go to get really cool free samples. But for those of you who are interested to see how I made it, let's head back to the shed and back in time to see how I'm going to go about making this into a sample pack. The problem is it's a run and gun uh, session that I've done. I've basically used this quite expensive mic that sits on top of my camera, but the sound is far from good. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and clean up the raw material and see how good we can get that sounding before we start messing about with all sorts of stuff. So first step, strip silence. Okay, so we've got our thing that I put up onto Twitter, which is recorded on my iPhone. Yeah, so it starts on B, then A, or B flat, and it goes right down to D overnight. I don't know if it's the thickness of the ice or whether it's the atmospheric temperature affects pitch apparently as well. Okay, so I'm first going to just chop these up like they're actual samples of musical notes and then also find some noise profiles how much just a high pass filter can help the noise floor. Interesting. So having chopped these up into samples and noise profiles, I'm going to run some batch spectral denoising in Isotope RX7 and then import the noise reduce files back into Logic. So not bad from the iPhone. Move those down just deal with this one for now. So first up, I'm gonna treat the original iPhone audio to just bog standard logic time stretch. Then the way I turn audio that decays into an undulating long note that can be looped, I simply duplicate the file, reverse the duplicate, then whack a super long fade on. It's very high pitched all this stuff, so we're gonna be tuning it down loads, and I think that's just where, where the magic happens with uh, sampling. With an EQ, I'm now accentuating the pitch center by boosting basically the frequency that that pitch sits at. Now I'm gonna take the iPhone audio, just the original speed this time, no time stretch. I'm gonna duplicate the file, reverse it, and duplicate these pairs with massive crossfades. Then on go the crossfades. I accentuate the pitch center again, and then have a go at adding tremolo to enhance the swirly stereoness of the sound. So onto the first file recorded with the camera mic, I'm going to apply the same principle as the last file, but instead of tremolo, I'm going to apply a stereo delay. Now what I'm gonna do next with this one is reduce the bandwidth massively with a high and low pass filter. Then I'm gonna fake an upper frequency with this pitch plugin, basically create a blended mix between the original and the same file, but two octaves up, but with the pitch going after the EQ plugin in the signal chain, so you get that toppy endiness. Now I can reduce the original bandwidth before the pitch plugin to make it even more cleaner. I think let's uh, have a go at uh, time stretching this one. I'm going to go extreme. 
Now I'm going to duplicate both the track and file and reverse the duplicate so it is effectively double tracking the original. <laughs> Very excited about this. Okay, next up. Then what we can start doing is copying tracks, placing the next audio file on it so we have similar delay effects, for example. And on this one, I'm going to double track the file and mess around with the pitch plugin some more. Now I'm going to play around with the automation of the effect blend of the pitch plugin. So with the rest of the files, I applied similar principles, delays, playing with different pitches, EQs, reducing bandwidth, accentuating the frequency of the pitch centers, and tidying up the crossfades. I then bounced each of these samples down within Logic, and I normalized each file to 0 dB. I'm also changing the tempo here to spread the files out a bit, so the tails of the region I'm about to put through reverbs and delays are allowed to play out. But I'm also routing every track out of Logic and out of my computer for some live, real-time morphing. Into record we go. I've got my outputs kind of multiply patched across several different morphy things. The Strymon timeline, the Strymon Big Sky. I'm also using Strymon's first Eurorack module, the Magneto, good old mutable instruments clouds, and my trusty fractal axe effects. Okay, so now I'm gonna curate each morph sound one by one to really see which ones contribute something new and fresh to the original raw samples already created. So let's just go through these new morphed samples. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just do a classic Remove silence from audio region. I'm being super picky as there's, well, there's nothing really clever about sticking a sound through a reverb pedal. So I'm whittling it down to just award-winning morphs. And simply need to turn those into their own audio regions. Then just a bit of a normalize action. So we're gonna start building some EXSs now which is the sample of choice for me. These are gonna be good old fashioned, as Paul and I call them, Akai style, one note per instrument style samples with exception to the morphed ones which will have dynamic layering. All I need to do is open up an empty EXS and then load in one of the samples into a single zone that's spread across the keyboard. That's gonna to be too high, B4. Sampling is so fun. Just gonna increase the release. Bearing in mind this is taken from an iPhone, I think it's a really interesting sound. Also, let's just hear it really kind of slow. So let's move through and make all these dozen or so instruments. Okay, so that's super dry. Just think the minute we go and put a little bit of starting to get more exciting. This is the sound of the earth. This is, that is a choir created by a lake. I'm getting a bit kind of emotional here. This is so exciting. It, um, you have to get these under your fingers. It moves you to go, okay, what I'm hearing is a choir. Or what I'm hearing is a synth, but that's made by a lake. 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build these dynamic crossfadable patches. For that, I need to actually create some different zones. That's going to be the piano and then new zone, the forte. Now, it feels like a bit of a hack in EXS, but basically uh, you've kind of got to do it with velocity. So let's have a look at view velocity, let's say. This is going to go to 65, this is going to go from 66, but we want to actually control it with the modulation wheel. It's actually quite simple. You just need to switch this off so it doesn't wobble. So let's go like that. This should be control one. And then the thing that's often forgotten is this basically bleeds the two from one to the other. Oh, I love UEXS. settings to instrument overwrite great so what I'm going to start by doing is just doing a quick tune and then I'll show you how I loop them and then you don't have to sit through me making the rest of the pack so if we look at I don't know why they just don't keep this all visible. So annoying. On, I'm picking a fairly arbitrary point to loop. Remember, these are samples, not milliseconds, so always add loads of zeros. And finally, I do a nice chunky equal power crossfade so it doesn't click, or indeed, you can't distinguish the loop point. As I said before, Link down below is a link to a page that contains the EXS versions of these, but I do anticipate this wonderful community called Piano Book may offer up some contact versions, but also within the samples folders of the uh, this pack, you'll get the actual original WAV. So whatever thing you're making in there, as you can see, they're kind of incredibly easy to make. So back to me in the future. I genuinely have been moved by this whole process. You know, sharing that discovery with my children was one thing. Coming out here at 2.30 in the morning was a romantically stupid thing to do. But for me, it's hearing the choral sound of the earth. We are from the earth and we make these choral sounds ourselves, but you can draw them out of the earth itself or from the surface of a lake. It really is quite an extraordinary thing. Gaia, I think they call it. And considering that these samples were made with a Rode kind of camera mic, I think and I hope it encourages you to get out there and create samples all of your very own. I would love to hear if you would like me to go a little bit slower and a little bit more in depth into how I process stuff, uh, how I load it into EXS, or indeed if you'd like me to do the equivalent in contact, which I'm currently learning. Put your comments down below and thanks as always for watching there'll be more freebies coming up more stupid adventures like this so do subscribe hit the bell if you want to be notified the next time i put up a film and one of those always nice if you've enjoyed it see you next time ah <laughs>